Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 21st of May, 2022. Coming to the Crusty Air Podcast, episode 173. More BS for the masses. All that and more coming your way. Please stick around. Oh, and listener and viewer discretion is advised. I tend to swear a bit. Stay tuned. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, episode 173, more BS for the masses. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful 21st of May. 2022. Yes, this week has been really interesting, especially when it comes to an investigation of the Emergency Measures Act. To all those individuals that are not familiar, uh, there's a big investigation going on in regards to who is also uh, who was authorized to promote the Emergency Measures Act and all that good stuff. And uh, well, it doesn't look too promising. A lot of BS coming our way. But just a reminder, too, if you like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like and subscribe and share this content all around your social media platforms. Help us independent podcasters get our words out there, too. So you, my beautiful audience and friends of my beautiful audience, can pick and choose what you want to see and hear at your own leisure, too. And uh, like I say, do what you can to help each other out. Like I'm saying, uh, BS Times. Yeah, uh, there was a little heat exchange going in the Parliament there a few days back. Uh, the uh, honor- Honorable Opposition. Uh, interim leader, uh, Candace Bergen of the Conservative Party of Canada, uh, at odds with Prime Minister Potato, Justin Trudeau. You know how he is. Yes, of course. Yes, lie upon lie upon lie. Uh, I'll play this for you, and uh, maybe you can get uh, <laughs> your own perception out of it anyway. I'm just not really impressed with the way things are going. Um, I- I'm looking at Canadians as a whole. Inflation has gone through the roof. Gasoline is getting ridiculously high. I think to $2.06 in Ottawa. And I think about maybe 220 in Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken. So it's just getting really, really stupid, all in the name of climate and the inflation, right? We, we've got the liberals saying that it's all about protecting the environment. And nowhere are they saying it's, you know, paying off the ridiculous debt they've accumulated prior to COVID and during uh, the COVID, the coof, the beer bug, what have you. But I'll play this video for you guys to decide too. And, you know, just to see what you think. You know what I mean? It's just really, uh, <laughs> it's just really outrageous what Justin has to say about it. I'll just queue it up here for you. And you guys decide. Okay. The Liberal government's argument for invoking the Emergencies Act on Canadians is very quickly falling apart. Last week, we learned the RCMP did not ask the government to invoke the act. And just yesterday, we learned the Ottawa police didn't either. The Liberals are simply not telling Canadians the truth. The Emergency Measures Act was an overreach by the Prime Minister and a government in trouble. Their power grab was just another example of classic Liberal cover-up, deny and blame. Isn't that the truth, Mr. Speaker? To my honorable Prime Minister. Because the illegal blockades in our cities and at our ports represented a threat to Canadian jobs, to trade, and to our democracy. Police told us they needed a... Okay, it wasn't a threat to the democracy. People were making a point. Now, I personally agree. Maybe blocking the borders might have been a little uh, stupid, but (laughs) you still don't see the point, do you? Now, take a look at the background behind our beloved dear leader, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Everyone still has their little masks on, right? Everyone's still worried and walking the line and feeling the narrative and all that good stuff, okay? Feeling that they're they're protecting themselves, okay? Now, there is video proof out there and validation from the CPAC channels and other mainstream and independent news outlets alike where they interviewed uh, Miss Lucky, you know, the superintendent, the RCMP of Canada, you know, all that good stuff, the big haunt show. And, and there's no valid answer or justification why the Emergencies Measures Act came in. But I digress. I'll carry on. Additional tools to clear the blockades. And as the OPP chief superintendent, Carson Party said, 
at yesterday's meeting, and I quote, the Emergencies Act gave police effective supplementary tools needed to help protect critical infrastructure, ensure the continuous and safe delivery of essential goods and services, while at the same time maintaining, or in the case of Ottawa, restoring peace, order, and public security. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Prime Minister's divisiveness is the reason the protest started, and his failure to lead is the reason it got worse. The Prime Minister called people names. He wedged, he divided, and then he spread misinformation. Then to deal with the mess that he created, he invoked the Emergencies Act, stomping on freedoms and freezing bank accounts. Now, she is right. The Prime Minister did say in Quebec television that people who are anti-vaccination, people who did not want to get the jab, were either racist, misogynist, anti-science, anti-this, anti-that. And the science has changed how many times now since this issue come to surface back in uh, March 2020? It's always changing. Now we have to worry about the so-called monkeypox that's been hitting the airwaves recently. Um, Interesting. I'll carry on. Now he's covering up. The time has come for the Prime Minister to stop spreading disinformation, stop hiding the fact that he and his ministers had no valid reason to invoke the Emergencies Act. Will he do that? Will he tell the truth? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in February, when blockades and occupations disrupted our economy, hurt workers, and endangered public safety, we invoked the Emergencies Act to help bring them to an end. We've now announced the Public Order Emergency Commission, an independent public inquiry, to examine the circumstances that led to the declaration being issued and the measures taken in response as required under the Act. I know that the leader of the Conservative Party, the interim leader of the Conservative Party, like really, just enough is enough, like honestly, um, what, what gets me too is I remember <laughs> two years ago when they had the railhead blockades over the pipeline, okay, over the LNG pipeline that's going to go on BC, the Wet'sa uh, uh people and the uh, hereditary chiefs at odds about building it. And yet 85% I said, yes, let's build this. Let's get the economy going in this area. Let's help with the first peoples. Let's get this done. And the protest kind of wide, stopping railheads and the blockades and the attempt at arson on some of these railheads and blockades. And yet there was no act instilled, right? Nothing was instilled during then. The Emergencies Act didn't go through during uh, uh, 9-11. You know, I was in service at the time when that was going on, right? Yet there's so much lies going on here too. But, you know, like say you decide. You decide, ladies and gentlemen. It has nothing to do with... Uh, protecting this democracy it has nothing to do with protecting uh, your safety. It's a matter of them protecting their safety and saving face, right? Now, hats off to some of those conservatives out there that are actually taking a stand for common sense in this country. We're also seeing quite a bit of uh, friction when it comes to the national debates in regards to who's going to lead the conservative party to victory into the next election. That's if they have the balls to call one. Right. But we'll see. Time will tell. But at least to say, ladies and gentlemen, it's just more BS for you and the masses. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And as a reminder, too, this podcast is brought to you in part by. The fine people at Dark Horse Entrepreneur. Yes, that's right. Contact uh, Tracy Brinkman, Dark Horse Entrepreneur. He'll give you insight and tips on how to create your podcast, how to make it that much better. And just please, once you do uh, contact him, tell him that Krusty Canuck sent you. Links and information will be in the description for your pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. And we're carrying on again with more BS for the masses. So as we carry on into this dilemma, okay, we know the phenomenon of inflation is going all over the world. We quote, you know, Miss Krista Freeland and her infinite wisdom, Mr. Speaker. You know how she likes to talk to parliamentarians and other Canadians alike. Now yeah, she's full of it. Okay. Now I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, you make your way down to Rebel Media or Rebel News. They've got a great documentary coming on there too. It's about the uh, Great Reset that Mr. Klaus Schwab would like to promote. You know, 
you know, the, the crazy little German guy with his ideas of, uh, you know, you owning nothing and being happy. So I checked, I, I would highly recommend you guys check that out too. Really interesting, different points of view in regards to what's being set ahead for us, right, in the near future. But uh, <laughs> this past week, I was thinking too, in regards to uh, what we're seeing brought to us, submitted to us. And it's nothing but smoke and mirrors. That's my best guess, ladies and gentlemen, right? That's my best guess. Nothing but smoke and mirrors for our viewing entertainment. And, and everybody's in such a big huff, too, in regards to what's happening in the States with uh, Johnny Depp and his uh, ex-wife, Amber Heard, or Amber Turd, however you want to call it. <laughs> I'm just so done with all the Hollywood drama, uh, with all the Hollywood BS in regards to what actor did this and what actor did that. I hope they find you know, some kind of common ground, not that I really care. You know, uh, I personally know some actors that have struggled to get ahead and they're making a decent living. Why? Cause they put their time in, they put their dues in and they never beat up their girlfriends or pooped in their beds. So we'll just leave it at that. Ladies and gentlemen, anyway, carry on again with more than BS. Cause if you're talking about BS, you know, I don't know why poo is such a big thing in today's news, but, uh, it is. <laughs> Anyway, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this stuff all around your social media platforms. And I'm also on Podbean, Rumble, Brighton, and Amazon too. So if you find yourself going to the Amazon podcast pages and look up Krusty Canuck and there I'll be. And to my Rumble fans, thank you once again. I'm getting a few more fans on Rumble. So please click like, subscribe there as well. And my Podbean listeners, please download, share this all around to the best of your ability and help a guy like myself out here too. Now I'm working steadily, so money is coming in. I'm getting paychecks, bills are being paid. As you know, the lights are still on, which is good. It's a good, fantastic thing. Weather is getting better outside, warmer, more people are going outside. Uh, my wife and I there two weeks ago, we were fi fixing our deck. I'll be doing that more this weekend. But if you do feel like donating, ladies and gentlemen, please donate. All links will be in the description where you can donate to me effectively. And I've updated my locals.com page too. And I'll put that in the description for you as all well as well. I'll be writing a few uh, tidbits and stuff here, a couple of paragraphs here and there just to keep you updated. So if you want to join me on locals.com, please do. I encourage it. Please contribute if you can. You don't have to, but I, the more the merrier. That way it's still a free speech platform. You get your money's worth. I get paid. Everything's good to go. And I'm not asking for much. I think $3 is what I, I put up there. So if you feel like donating three bucks a month, to my locals page to help my podcast help me out that'd be great and like i said my update pages too on youtube and facebook i had some computer issues had to reformat everything i lost a lot of data uh but i'm up and running again so everything's good to go and uh you know we can go from there ladies and gentlemen like i say carry on more bs there uh for the masses now we have to be very very i would say critical very critical when it comes to what we watch in television. Doesn't matter if it's the news or our favorite TV show. I am finding the more I watch and the more I listen to the mainstream media, the more desire I have to watch more independent media, like our friends at Rebel, like our friends at True North, like the likes of Daniel Boardman, uh, Diverge Media, Druthers News Information, and other independent guys out there like Mr. Sunshine Baby, Hammerhead Garage, Dio Talk. Not to mention a few others that are up and coming as well, too. So it's good to get other points of view and other perspectives out there. So when we wake up in the morning, go to work or do our daily routine, we're not constantly mired in other bullshit. Okay? Right? Now, where I work, I'm behind the wheel and I'm shoveling. I'm doing manual labor. And there's a lot of time there for me to think to myself about things and about how life is going what matters and what's good for people, right? And it brings me to my political beliefs. It brings me to what I fought for as a soldier, what I believed in as a soldier, what I believe in now as a civilian, roughly the similar things. I'm more liberty-based, liberty meaning that I don't care what you do with your life. Do it well. Do it the best of your ability. Just don't hit people and take their stuff. Simple things. And yet we have elected officials and bureaucrats alike who have reared their ugly heads the past two years, who have told you where to shit, where to eat, where to pick your nose, where to do this, where to do that, who to love, who not to love, what to believe in, what to believe in. And a lot of them still can't figure out what's wrong with the world today. Oh, see, that's the arrogance. 
of, of people that have been brought up in certain conditions. And not necessarily brought up in certain conditions, who have been employed in certain conditions too. I have never seen a party in my life who is so more out of touch with Canada than the Liberal Party of Canada. There's nothing liberal about them, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And I've had a few people in the past few weeks weigh in on my Facebook page and scold me for saying such heinous things. How dare you, Krusty Canuck, saying all this? How dare you talk about the Liberal Party that way when they brought this program in the 60s and this program in the 70s? They still fucking robbed us blind in the 90s. Okay. And they're robbing us blind now in the name of this inflation, in the name of carbon tax and climate change. BS, I say. More BS for the masses, they keep telling us. It is. It is all BS. You, you, taxing people into prosperity never worked. Right? Taxing people into saving the world isn't going to work. Okay? Is there logic meaning that, well, if we charge you an extra 35 cents or 38 cents a liter for gasoline or diesel, then the so-called climate emergency just going to go away? No. They're just covering their asses to promote their incompetence yet again. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, back to Krusty Canuck Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, which brings me to a point of the episode, too, where I'm going to explain the word fascism and communism to all the little kitties out there that really have no concept of what it really was, who basically deny the history of what fascism did to Europe during World War II and what communism has done to Europe and what communism is still doing to people around the globe. So this here, ladies and gentlemen, is an actual encyclopedia. Ooh, look at that, eh? Oh, isn't that fantastic? Isn't that pretty? Hey, I'll just maybe put this in 3Ds for you, if that'll help, hey? Would you like some more Britannica? Yes. Anyhow, I come across the page of fascism here for you. Now I'll just read it out aloud, the interpretation. Now it goes on about the Italian fascism and German fascism and Spanish fascism, which brought the Spanish Civil War and what have you. But uh, I will just sit here and let's see. Okay, here we go. In all its forms, fascism displays certain key features the absolute primacy of the state is the chief of these and from it follows others the submission of the individual the submission of the individual hmm will to unify the will of the people as expressed by the state and entire obedience to a usually charismatic leader who embodies the state in addition Marital virtues, combat, and conquest are celebrated. Or martial virtues. Correction, I misspelled, I misread that, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. Martial virtues, combat, and conquest are celebrated, while liberal democracy, rationalism, and bourgeois values are denigrated. Right? Now, that's fascism. Give everything to the leader and to the state, and everything will be just fine. Does that sound similar to what Klaus Schwab is saying? You will own nothing and be happy? Hmm. All right. Let's take a look at communism, too. Here's another book. Oh, wow. Another encyclopedia. I think I mentioned last episode where we were, as children, taught what to do when it came to finding information. Uh, let's see here. This magical word. Uh, here we go. Uh, communism, political system or social organization based on common property or upon equal distribution of wealth. It is also applied to political programs and movements inspired by the Marxist Leninist principles, which seek to bring about such types of social organization. 
A brief treatment of communism follows. The origins of the idea of communism lie deep in the Western thought. Hmm. The idea of a classless society in which all the means of production and distribution are owned by the community as a whole and from which any traces of the state have disappeared. Hmm. Okay, well, it sounds similar to what I just read to you earlier in regards to fascism. So the state disappears, and yet it's communism, which is the state that tells you what to do. Well, it doesn't matter how they would it, ladies and gentlemen. It's still a totalitarian BS front. And it's creeping. And I hate to say it, but uh, we might have to take a stand against this crap. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Anyhow, that's the history lesson for, from me today to you. It's pretty well self-explanatory, too. You know, now you look at the past 10 years and how they have promoted a lot of these, you know, community standards. And there's nothing wrong with being part of the community and sharing your time and effort with somebody. That's just about being humanitarian. If I have $1,000 tucked away, it's tucked away for a reason. It's not meant for anybody else. It's meant for me. It's the same for you. You work your butt off to put your money aside to build something, to either build your own equity, not the equity that the proletariats are trying to promote right now when it comes to how many people have to work here and how many people have to work there. You build your own equity. Who is the state to come and take that? Who is anyone to come and tell you that you must give this to the community? Now, I personally know members of certain communities that live that way. Hutterites, Mennonites, because they choose to. They're not forced to, okay? And they have their own little community rules, too. If they don't want to live by those community rules, they have every choice to leave if they want to, to go explore other parameters of their lives if they decide to. Now, I don't know the inner workings and the politics of Mennonite and how to write communities, but I also know, though, for a fact that some of them are just down-to-earth, decent human beings, and they're nice people, right? So that's what it means. You decide as an individual how you want to live your life. Don't let that garbage I just read to you thwart your decision on how to be a decent man or woman. And I'm not going to say how you identify a decent man or woman. Okay? I'm not going to tiptoe around the social justice warrior BS, and neither should you. Okay? Like I said, this past week I've done a lot of thinking. And there's time we have to stand up and be a little more determined, a little more realistic, okay? As I keep saying, keep asking the tough questions. Keep demanding the, the tough questions. Keep demanding the, the answers, too. That video I showed you with, with Ms. Bergen and Mr. Trudeau going back and forth, it's just a word salad. Now, some have said to me, Krusty, you know, why are you backing up some conservatives <coughs> in Parliament when they go on? It's because they're the healthy opposition. And some of them actually have the cojones to get out there and say, no, you're wrong, as they should in the House of Commons. They're living up to their parliamentary promise and their dedication to bring this forward, to bring this out in the open, to encourage the dialogue, as we should. But, of course, the liberal side has other tricks up their sleeve, too. Lying about the climate, lying about inflation, lying about the taxes, lying about online censorship. You have people in said party, too. You just saw the video there. Individuals still wearing their masks. Hiding their faces because they just don't want to be seen or they're just following orders, right? Because it's safety. We know it's BS, okay? The rest of the world is getting over this, and there's still a lot of Canadians who want to hang on for dear life because they think they're doing the right thing or because they're scared. Well, it's time to stop being effing scared. That's what it is. It's time to stop being scared. It's time to stop questioning it or correction. Yeah, get out there and question it. And don't be afraid of the repercussions. How many people have lost their jobs because of this? How many people have been fired because they don't walk the certain line? Yours truly was let go from a couple of jobs because of his opinion. Oh, we deem that you're being unsafe. Oh, we deem that your opinion doesn't reflect our company's values. 
mean you don't believe encouraging people to be free to go spend their money at your store? The ability to do that? What are you afraid of? Right? I've had a few vocal, uh, vocal, uh, vocal, <laughs> vocal exchanges with a couple of people recently telling me that you shouldn't say such words in your show. You shouldn't say this, shouldn't say that because people might feel scared. Good, feel scared. But words are not violence. If I went up to some guy and called him an F and A hole, and then I cold cocked him in the jaw, well, that's aggravated assault. If I called him an F and A hole and walked away, well, that's just being rude. That's not violence. Maybe aggressive, but it's not violent. We're going to start bringing reality back <laughs> into our exchanges again, okay? I don't care how you live your life. Do it well to your ability. But like I say in my bio, right, on my webpage, don't tell me that the sun is the moon and the moon is the sun to further your narrative because I am not going to buy it. And I expect you, my wonderful audience out there too, not to buy it as well. It's that simple. So like I say, more BS for the masses. We still constantly got to swim through this and filter through this garbage again, but we will find light at the end of this manufactured darkness. It's that simple. But we have the powers that be that still want to hover over us, you know, and brew up the little cauldrons and all this and come up with another plan, right? In regards to how you feel about the Liberal Party, and I've, I, I've had many people Send me little tidbits on my Facebook page. You don't know what you're talking about, Krusty. What do you know about service? Let me tell you about 20 years of it I've had. And I've worked for some great people, and I've worked under for some great people. And I've also worked under some real, real shitheads, too. And some of them have illustrated the example more than once of what not to do. And some of those clowns, that gave me a hard time are similar to the people that are in Ottawa right now calling the shots for you and me. So I know the next little while is going to be a struggle. Ladies and gentlemen, the next little while is going to be hard on people, but the best we can do right now, other than getting really violent, and I'm not saying with words, I'm saying with actions to those SJWs out there who can't tell the difference between the left and right. They're all the same fucking wing on the same goddamn bird. Start treating people the way you want to be bloody treated, okay? I don't care how blue your hair is. I don't care how pink it is. I don't care if you grow your body hair and say, one day I'm an elephant and the next day I'm a rutabaga. Knock yourself out. You will find the truth in that soon enough. But for the rest of us who stand up straight and use our thumbs and realize our wisdom teeth were meant for chewing raw meat, okay, we'll carry the F on and do the best we can with what we got. And we'll question the status quo and we'll question the authority when it comes to this BS. And I encourage my American friends to do the exact same. My British friends, my German friends, everyone who's listening to this podcast all over the world. Okay. I like to believe that the human race is generally good. Really. Generally good when it comes to things, to going to work, to paying your bills, to doing your part, to helping your friends and families out with typical kindness and courtesy. If you don't want to be kind, that's on you. Don't blame the state. Right? You don't want to go to work one day. You don't want to pay this. You don't want to pay that. That's not the state's fault. That's yours. But what the state's fault is, is telling you what to think, what to read, what to write, how to say this, how to say that. No more of this tiptoeing around accommodations. No more. Right? Comfort is not a right. Neither is intellectual comfort. It's not a right. Okay? You want to be cruel to somebody? You pay the consequences. It's that simple. Okay? But don't buy this BS of online safety. And I will say my sincerest condolences to the people of Buffalo that went through the heinous crime of that little shithead and his mass ideas. Okay? But I don't want people buying in the narrative, too when it comes to this whole white supremacy BS, because no, I was not raised in a household and taught that I'm a supremacist. I was raised in a household and taught to be good to people the best of your ability, and you judge people on their character and their actions. Am I going to sum up the whole white race because a couple of shitheads did something stupid? 
Hmm? No. I'm going to sum up those shitheads. Just as you should. Doesn't matter if they're black, white, pink, purple. If they identify as a sunflower, they committed the crimes. But don't buy this whole narrative where there's this uncanny white supremacist strife going on. No. There's a lot of victims out there. A lot of the victim mentality. And what that kid did was stupid. Really stupid. But no way do I believe that there's this whole great big insurgency of white supremacists popping out to annihilate people of this or people of that. I don't buy it, and neither should you. So let's stand firm, stand stronger, and stand up for what's right, ladies and gentlemen. Honesty, integrity. There's nothing wrong with loving your country, nothing wrong with loving your neighborhood. If you don't love your country, fine. You don't have to love your country, right? But think about this. While you're dissing and pooping on your country, I guess you don't mind those benefits that come your way too, eh? Hmm. Something to think about, right? <coughs> anyway, I've been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful May 21st, 2022. Here in Canada, it's Victoria Day weekend. Queen Victoria was a monarch. Uh, back in the 1800s, I think from 1838 until 1901, I believe. So she was the second largest reigning monarch in Commonwealth history or in British history, next to Queen Elizabeth, who'll be celebrating her, I think, 70 years on the throne. Not that it really matters to me. My life won't change whether she's around or not. I'm sure the royal family is a bunch of lovely people in their own way. But I personally don't think we need it anymore in this country. What say you? Please send me an email if you can, too. I'll put this at the bottom of my page there. Send me an email, crustybcanuck67 at gmail.com. I'll leave it in the description for you, too. And once again, please check out my store, Customized Girl. Summer's on the way. So it's like I have lots of T-shirts, shorts, and I got swimsuits for the ladies. So please, ladies and gentlemen, check out Krusty Canuck at customizedgirl.com. Check it out and get yourself some good Krusty Connect swagger. Every little bit helps me along the way. And if you want to donate, please donate if you can. Like I say, please like, subscribe, and comment when you see this. And share it all around your social media platforms. And to my Rumble uh, fans out there, please share it around in your Rumble channels as well. You need to get some more subscribers there. Help this guy out. Uh, this Tuesday, I'll be, I'm going to be interviewed by somebody. I'm still waiting for some email uh, stuff there. But I will be having an interview from a lady out of Massachusetts who wants to know some things about Canada and stuff. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So I'll do the best I can not to insult my fellow Canadians. But I will give uh, this individual a lesson on Canadian geography and some of our history, too, for your listening and viewing pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. So like I say, this has been another episode of the Crescent Neck Podcast, episode 173, More BS for the Masses more or less a rant and rave and what's been going on the past little while in the Canadian news and other mainstream uh, events. But that's just who I am, ladies and gentlemen. I want to get the information out there to you as best I can, the best of my ability. And I also want to thank my audience. I'm going to a few more subscribers on the tube. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I have had uh, some wonderful uh, comments the past couple of weeks. Thank you once again. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys are awesome. And uh, another round of clap for the individuals that give me a hard time, right? So, <laughs> uh, you guys know who you are. Like I said, it's 21st of May, 2022. I will be around on Tuesday again, trying to get another episode up. I know I missed last time because my laptop crashed. So, But that happens. That happens. Uh, a lot of action on this laptop, getting things done, getting episodes formulated, uh, typing, blogging. But like I said, check me out at locals.com too. Link in the description. And please donate if you can. At your own leisure, too. I'm not expecting millions of dollars, but every little bit helps. And I'd like to make this a full-time commitment sometime in the future. So it's going to take people like you to make that happen, ladies and gentlemen. So like I say, pay attention to my updates on YouTube and Facebook, respectively. And uh, I'll keep you posted to the best of my ability. And please send me a comment or two if you can once you see this. Or send me an email. Just let me know you're around. Ask me anything you want to know. So... As I always say, ladies and gentlemen, we can do the best we can to help each other out in these trying times. And always remember, too, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Aye, aye, sir. Everybody.
There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. <laughs>